hello friends welcome to the village design course so in previous lectures we have covered cover various uh, sections of uh, xilinx ise how to create a project how to simulate and how to synthesize so we have understood how to synthesize our design now the next step is a creating a user constant file so whatever the design we have written a vhdl code that we wanted to test on the fpga platform or we can say on the hardware platform so to implement or to port our design on hardware platform we have to give the user constant files so what is user constant file it 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 gives the interface to the our design to the external environment for example for example we have design a basic gates okay so this basic gates have two input and three outputs yes so now this logical implementation we have done using vhdl now that input interface i have to test to the hardware so i can give the input interface through the switch like logic 0 as well as logic 1 so that input will go to the fpga then mpga will do the perform uh, its internal operation and gives the respected output and that output we can observe on the led so for that purpose this user constraint file are useful as well as it gives a various timing constraint uh, whenever we are implementing a complex design it creates a critical path so timing constraint we can give other uh, static timing analysis constraint so the the other parameters in this so many constraints are available in the vsdl while implementing our design on to your hardware platform so few of them we'll try to cover it up under this user constraint section so creating a user constraint file means when programming an fpga through a software such as xilinx isc or vivado we need this user constraint file if you are not creating this user constraint files there is no meaning of interconnecting our digital logic to an fpga okay so we cannot port our design or if we if we port also it will not connect internally okay so we need to inform the software what physical pins on the fpga are using or connect to the in relation to the hdl signals let us say as in the vhdl design flow we have studied it is divided in three section one is the library entity and the architecture section so whatever the signals we have declared in the entity section that are accessible to the external environment so whatever the signals we declare in entity that signal assignment we can do to a particular fpga pin so the internal logic whatever written into the Uh, in the hdl that can be connected to the fpga pin and then that fpga pin through the pcb routing it can be accessed to the external uh, interface devices like switch led or any 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 other interface okay so try to understand this concept how we are going to connect our logical signals to the external environment okay so ucf file constraints are used during the implementation process so when you are going to implement our design on to the fpga that time is use ucf constraint files are used so in that also their timing constraints are there that also are applicable while implementing it so in the synthesis design flow we have seen there are some constant user constraints so speed power area all these constraint are considered using the during this implementation phase can enter timing and placement constraint in the ucf file so ucf is just nothing but only connecting the pins it also includes the timing parameter as well as the placement constant so where to whenever you want to place some particular block in very specific region so that also can be done like writing a register high or low in the microcontroller so when 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 we when you are using the microcontroller so whenever we want to use one of the pin of that controller we are forcing it logic 1 or logic 0 similar way to react on that fpga pin we need this ucf files in case of microcontroller many of these pins are hardwired okay so microcontroller doesn't have that much of flexibility so let us say example uh, 8051 it has a 40 pin so all these 40 pins are dedicated so each pin has its own function we cannot change the functionality of that pin 
maybe some of the pins are input or output that much only we can do either we can connect as a in or out but for example for example in the uh, 8051 there is one dedicated uh, dedicated port where we have uh, we have uh, their rx tx timer counter this 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 values or this signal names are there so these are the dedicated port we cannot change that port but in case of fpga we have flexibility any pin functionality we can defend using this ucf so that's what fpgas are much more flexible than the microcontroller and that's what fpgas are mainly designed for the purpose of new r and d development new innovations and there lot of flexibility is there we can change any pin for any other functionality so it is the advantage and that's what fpg are the building blocks of our electronics circuits now we'll see a few of the uh, user constraint parameters so we'll start with the first timing specification so timing specification can be applied to the entire device or it is also called as a global to a specific or to a specific group so timing constraint can be applied to global as well as for a specific group so again it is based on there are two methods to apply this timing constraint one first method is is based on the net name so we we can we can mention the uh, constraint like keyword net then that net name pnm again uh, that keyword and the we can give the logical group another method to groups using the keyword time grp time grp so we can create a group with a group name equal to ffs and this u1 is something like instantiation of that particular component slash star so under that uh, uh, instantiation whatever the parameters or whatever the we can say um, uh, nets available that all comes under this timing group then period time specification we can assign a clock period with the keyword net the signal name clock and with a period is equal to 15 nanosecond so whenever in a real time we, we if you have external clock input for example 10 megahertz so that clock period also we can create to match the timing specification there is another one uh, constraint in the ucf file or in constraint file we can give from to time spec so here from to style time spec can be used to constrain paths between the time groups so if we create a different different time groups having different different timing parameters that can be grouped for example here time grp r ffs is equal to rising of ffs so here we are creating a rising group called r ffs so all the elements in this group are works on the rising edge similarly we are creating another one group which are working on the falling edge now in this how to use this from to so time spec name and from ffs to ffs with a parameter of 15 nanosecond so this creates a flip flops with the same edge this creates a flip flop of a same edge timing spec as well as for the next example r ffs to triple fs it is rising edge to falling edge constant then next example is falling edge to rising edge so like that we can create different different timing spec as well as offset time spec so to automatically include the clock buffer or routing delay in your clock to out timing specification these offsets constants are used the example given like net that out name name then keyword offset out 25 after the clock net name so particular ne uh, particular net we can delay with that particular time delay then there are some constraint that are related to the pad so what are the pads pads are nothing but the fpj io input output pins where each fpj input output contains the pad so that is the actually entry port or point of our signal as well as the exit point of uh, signal for the external environment so that pad to internal flip flop speed specification we can give or pad to pad speed specification also we can give so for example again timing ignoring ignoring the timing also for a particular net also we can ignore the timing uh, so we, if it is not very much critical we can ignore that timing for example ignore timing of net reset underscore n so for that syntax is net colon reset underscore n colon tig so tig is a timing ignore keyword 
as well as like timing ignore we can accept some path also path exception can be done in using this constant file now in constant file there are priorities also defined which has given highest priority so usually timing ignore has given highest priority then from to then period spec like that this priority is also defined the last one the assignment of io pins to the particular signal so as i said the internal logic we have designed in our hdl program that has input output or we can say the signals declared in the entity or inputs and output that input output logical design has to connect to the particular fpj pin that can be connected using this constant io pin number so for that syntax is net the signal name location loc is equal to that particular pin number of the fpj so here in this case io net name will connect to the fpj pin number 311 so like that internal connection of the fpj will happen here internal logical connection to the fpj pin using this constant there is another one constant called the io standard so whenever you are connecting any signal to the fpj pin because fpj pin connected through the external environment where logic or voltage levels are defined so if we wanted to operate our fpj ttl level so particular io standard we need to mention for that particular signal if it is a lv cmos then that also we can mention it if it is lv ttl lv cmos uh, again in that also it is if the voltage level is 2.5 volt or 3.3 volt so all that constant we can define in this constant file the clock dedicated route also we can define if some some uh, some some uh, uh, some path we have to dedicatedly define for the clock so that path also we can define as a clock dedicated route so that will be given highest priority while implementing it and it it will be, it will be taken care by the uh, synthesis tool while implementing it as well as sometimes it creates an error so in that case we have to give the uh, its its uh, parameter clock dedicated route true or a false to avoid the errors so these are the few constant we try to cover in this creating a user constant file if you want more and more details we can refer the xilinx user guide u625 so lot of information is available in that user guide now we'll try to create a user constant file for our earlier design so in earlier design if you know in simulation and synthesis we have followed the same design of basic gates now let us say let us say this design is simulated verified properly we are uh, we are, we are fine with our uh, functionality then we have synthesized the design synthesis also ready we have seen the synthesis of rtl synthesis as well as the technology synthesis now to connect my internal logic gates to the external environment and if i wanted to verify it on the hardware platform we need to create a user constraint file you need to create a user constraint constant file so for our development board for our development board these are the inputs okay so as i said this switches this switches we are using as a input so j14 header on the development board as a switch and if we connect this switch to the p1 header of the fpj this is a p1 header of the fpj if you connect this two then first input i0 will become as my input a and input b as a second switch as a input b so i need to connect see we we have written here let us say we have implemented and gate logic and we wanted to port into this fpj so let us say if and gate is implemented in this fpj so this logical signal a and b are present here now i want to connect this a signal to the switch 1 try to understand so this can be done using this constant file so we have to create a user constant file like this net i am just writing net signal name a l o c location is equal to p31 okay so like this like this we are connecting signal a of and gate to the switch 1 to the switch 
one okay so like this signal a is connected to the switch one so if we switch one sorry so if you press this switch so it will create logic zero or logic zero or logic one now if i connect if i want to connect switch second switch to control the second input for example b then we can connect it through the this switch b i want to connect to the second input b so we can write a constant like net b this location is equal to p32 got it so it this internal signal will come to this header p1 because p1 is directly uh, connected to through wire to our switch so indirectly this b is connected to the switch to try to understand this is very important while implementing any design on this development platform similarly this outputs p q r p q r can be connected to these three leds and for that location is 141 143 138 in that case this header has to be connected to the header p4 header p4 on the fpga platform so in once once you implement this we can understand in a better way so let us go into again back to the our ise and try to create a user constraint file okay so this is our synthesized design inputs as a b p q r okay so there are multiple ways to create a user constraint file like we have earlier we have created a file we have added our design file by right clicking on our on our uh, target device right click new source here if you see after implementation here we are getting a implementation constraint file so here we can directly create a file text file or or there is another one method we can create io pin planning using plan ahead so today i am going to show you io pin planning using plan ahead so directly it will open the whatever the target fpg we have selected that architecture it will show and we can directly uh, pinpoint to the fpg architecture so let us open it so here this device is open okay it will show the schematic and all these things so if you see the if you click on the schematic the technology schematic it will show here input a input b p q r the outputs and with the input output buffers now to assign the pins to assign the signals to this uh, input a b we can click here otherwise we can go here if it is not click anywhere we can go in all all ports and in scalar port it will show see here signal a whatever signal we have declared in our program so input a b p q are the output so same way here it is showing the uh, signal names and here we have to click on this site no for this site so if i wanted to connect a go to this presentation so this input a i want want to connect to the location or fpg location at p31 so let's assign it site p31 okay then b b signal we have to we wanted to assign to p31 and that can be controlled through this second switch okay so p32 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 okay then q okay this we are declaring as the out so this we have to connect to the leds so for led we have output y0 y1 y2 at at location p141 pin number fpj pin number is 141 so p141 then similarly 143 and 138 p143 and 138 mm. 
P138. So all the pin assignments we have done. So you can you can very close verify also if you click on this A, it will show P31, B32. So like this. So this is in the schematic view. If you go to the device and if you click here, it will show here. See if you see here and just zoom out. So this is the internal architecture of uh, FPGA. So FPGA, if you see here, FPGA consists of the slice and this block is called as the CLB. Okay, and these are the pads where external interface or pins are connected. Okay. So in future lectures, we are going to seek or we will be cover a detailed FPGA architecture. So this is, if you see here. This pad is marked as a port, port A. Similarly, this is also P32 is port B. So like this, like this signal or this external uh, interface is assigned to this particular pin. Now this pin on the FPGA board, I will show you. So let us say somewhere here on the FPGA pin, that pin is came out. So signal A and B is came here. And that is routed through PCB routing at this port and through wires it is coming to here and through switches it is control. So for example, if both the switcher switches are off, so it will consider logic 0, logic 0 will go here and accordingly these output pins P, Q are also connected to this port and this port is connected to LEDs and here we can observe the LED output. So like this we can observe the behavior of the or the functionality of the digital design okay so now once this is done we have to just say the save so it will save our constant file so automatically it will create that constant so here only one constant we applied is the location constant if you want to see that details you can go into IAC and if you explore the ga uh, basic gates or design file name here you can see here basic gates dot ucf then here in processing window you can edit it edit constant text then here you can see plan had generated physical constant and this is already generated automatically here so there are two methods one method we can right click here new source and you can create a constant file you can create a constant file this is one method and using second method is using the plan ahead okay so both the methods create the same way doesn't matter so in this plan head only it is something like gi uh, we can observe the uh, interface we can observe the architecture it is better view. This, this is for the user interface and understanding how it is implemented so this is the package so all these all the there uh, this this APG has 144 pins so all 144 pins are routed like this so this gives a more interaction about how APGs are use so now i am closing this because the pin assignment is done in this also so many other factors so many features are there so slowly slowly we'll try to cover it up so once this is done once this is done now my io uh, user constraint done synthesis done now i have to implement the fpga so in this implement stage it will translate design map to the particular technology design place and rotate it will do the placement and routing so this thing this thing will cover in our next video lecture placement and routing on the fpga thank you